as a uh, brilliant biomedical scientist who's made major contributions to uh, medical science. He's the discoverer of a uh, hormone that's not an everyday occurrence. He was a recipient of the Gairdner Award, which has uh, often been a precursor to the Nobel Prize. In addition to that, uh, I think Henry has had a transform transformative influence on health research in Canada, and very few uh, individuals have the opportunity or the talent uh, to achieve that in their lifetime. Brilliance, confidence, persistence, Along with an unbounded curiosity, these surely describe Dr. Henry Friesen. Born in Morden, an agricultural town southwest of Winnipeg, Dr. Friesen took his medical training at the University of Manitoba. Henry and I were interns at the Winnipeg General Hospital together. We used to prowl the wards at all hours, looking for interesting cases and talking about them. And I formed a, a very high impression of him, even then as a medical student, he first of all was extremely bright, secondly had a wide-ranging uh, interest in what was going on and was always looking for new things to learn. This is a man who uh, will walk into a room and uh, uh, more by force of intellect and uh, uh, quiet effectiveness gradually galvanize a group of people to a common purpose, raise the tone of the conversation, move it to principles and vision and away from anything small. Uh, he's a remarkable individual. After postgraduate work in Boston, Dr. Friesen returned to Canada. At McGill, his groundbreaking work on human growth hormone led to a treatment for growth retardation in children and his discovery of the hormone prolactin came from the same innovative approach to research. First of all, a high degree of curiosity, really wanting to know how things work and why they work and what their implications are. Secondly, in, Henry has a wonderful critical intelligence and can analyze and think critically about evidence and uh, the information that he gains from research. I re recall at the early stage, for example, discovery of prolactin, where those who were those senior elder statesmen of the field who would, uh, would uh, be at, at, at the meetings and say, oh, prolactin doesn't exist, declare it to be so. And, uh, and so you, you had to be, have a certain confidence and conviction that uh, others might have a contrary point of view and they're entitled to it. But in the end, it's the evidence that counts. I think Henry has an eye for what's important. Uh, he also has very substantial courage. And the pursuit of prolactin was one example and the discovery. Uh, his work with growth hormone uh, in children, another example. Um, but you see it as a consistent bright line running through his career. Uh, discoveries, innovation, uh, taking the path that is not well trodden. Nothing for somebody trained in medicine is, is more rewarding than seeing some, some of your own personal discoveries being applied successfully to the diagnosis and treatment of patients. Uh, and uh, by now I would guess there's tens of thousands of people around the world who, whose prolactin disorder has, uh, has now been identified and appropriately treated and continues to be tr treated and to fundamentally influence the practice of, of medicine throughout the world. Those, those are very gratifying results. When Dr. Arnold Neymark became Dean of Medicine at the University of Manitoba, there was only one choice to replace him as head of physiology. Soon, Dr. Friesen's reputation as a scientist was being enhanced by his success as an administrator. This combination brought him to national attention. Well, I remember uh, Henry and I having a conversation when he was uh, considering uh, taking on the position at the MRC. And it became clear to me that uh, he was going to bring to it uh, something that perhaps others had not brought in quite the same measure. The interesting thing to me was watching the Henry Friesen, who was the low-key, modest, 
brilliant scientist. And then watching the Henry Friesen, who emerged from the chrysalid, uh, in many ways the same, but in other ways quite different, um, in the 1990s as he was forming the vision for the Canadian Institutes of Health Research. And we had the same integrity, the same intellect, but a remarkable ability to articulate and communicate a much bigger vision. Imagine if we put together a network of collaborations across this country, knitted all of the, this wonderful talent and activity, and in a sense had Canada Health Research Inc., a network of activity, collaborating, coordinated, an integrated vision of health research. What is possible? And wouldn't it be right that Canadians see their most cherished social program, their health care system, properly underpinned and resting on a foundation that is Canada Health Research Inc., Canada Institutes of Health Research? As a scientist, as a teacher, as an administrator, Henry Friesen has had an overwhelming impact on medical research in Canada. There are so many reasons why Henry Friesen belongs in the Canadian Medical Hall of Fame. One can start with his discovery of prolactin and elucidation of its physiological effects. That in itself has had a huge impact in terms of clinical care and also kick-started uh, the whole neuroendocrinological field. You could move to his tremendous work with growth hormone in children. Then you would move along to his stewardship of the Medical Research Council in a period of budgetary pressure. And then, of course, on to the creation of the Canadian Institutes of Health Research. This is an individual who, on three or four scores, has a very strong claim to be in the Canadian Medical Hall of Fame. When you put them all together, it was a slam dunk. <laughs>